Hey guys, Ron here, and I'm drawn to Pokemon because of how much of a fan I am of Pokemon's design philosophy. I figure that since I've dug deep into the aesthetic of Pokemon by making my own fake Mon for years, and studying Game Freak's outlook when it comes to designing Pokemon, that I'd let you know what I believe are the 10 best designs from each generation, based on the criteria that fans believe makes for a good Pokemon design. By polling Twitter, scouring forums, and asking thousands of followers, the criteria I believe make the best Pokemon designs are as follows. They're unique, recognizable, and entertaining without being too abstract. Abstract. They're expressive and full of some kind of personality while still being believable creatures. A key factor is that they have a good ratio between cute and intimidating. They gotta look adorable in some way without being simple, but they have to look powerful while still being friendly. The design should have some kind of concept and execute it in a clever and cool way. Perhaps the color scheme is very pleasing and indicates the Pokemon's type or concept, but it should always achieve the goal it was designed for. A perfect Pokemon design does not exist, but I'm gonna make a mini top 10 for each generation consisting of Pokemon who have a mix of these criteria. Some Pokemon are perfect for what they're supposed to be, but don't adhere to what most fans would enjoy. Like uh, Stunfisk is exactly what the concept is supposed to look like, a flat trap Pokemon, but it's simply not what everybody wants in a Pokemon. And I'm also not gonna put a Pokemon here just cause it looks really cool to me, like Sceptile. It has to look cool and fulfill most of these criteria. It's still subjective cause it's art, but I'm trying to be a bit objective about it. That's why the order of these could change tomorrow, as I learn more and appreciate each design, but I'm confident in my picks. This is gonna be part 1 and cover gens 1 to 4, so make sure to leave a like if you want to see part 2. Let's begin! Generation 1 is filled with Pokemon who were designed with the limitations of a Game Boy, spawning a lot of triangular eyes, ears, and spikes galore. The franchise started with many kaiju and RPG inspired aesthetics, so Kanto has a very unique look. There are so many iconic Pokemon, so it was hard to pick just 10. That's why it's the only gen with 11 slots. Fortunately, we had enough time to form opinions on these Pokemon, so I'm confident in this list. Number 11. Snorlax. Its entire concept is fully realized in a design that looks like no other Pokemon, while still being simple and cute, and showcasing power and strength. It's a mandatory encounter Pokemon considering it was made to be a roadblock and it shows. It seems imposing without feeling too legendary. Its color scheme is very pleasing too. Overall, it's a design that is entertaining to see in motion and when asleep. Number 10. Eevee. One of the few Pokemon whose plainness is pure genius. It's a blank canvas. It visually indicates how this Pokemon can be whatever you want it to be. And the fact that many prefer Eevee over its well-designed evolutions demonstrates the power of this Pokemon's cuteness. It was successfully made to be desired. I love how its hybrid design makes it look like a new animal. It's not a fox or cat. It's an Eevee. The only Pokemon that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pikachu in marketability. Number 9. Vaporeon. I believe this is the best designed Eeveelution, and that's saying a lot since they're all amazing. Jolteon is fantastic and Flareon is great design-wise, but Vaporeon is the only design that makes an effort to be a completely new concept, above Eevees. It perfectly marries Mammal and Fish, becoming the only actual mermaid Pokemon we have, and it's an incredible feat. And not only did this combo not look awkward, but actually looks majestic and intricate. Number 8. Gyarados a Pokemon who looks as monstrous as Gyarados would rarely be accepted by all fans, but his design feels earned. We all want Magikarp to go from this feeble fish into a serpentine sea creature, and it's still clearly a fish rather than a literal reptilian dragon. It's impressive how segmented this Pokemon is without looking too complicated. It has the perfect amount of detail to convey this tremendous design. Number 7. Articuno and Zapdos Unfortunately, while cool, Moltres isn't a near-perfect Pokemon design, but we'll talk about Galarian Moltres later. Articuno looks dignified and mystical. The ice crystal crest, snowy chest, rigid wings, and aurora-shaped tail subtly represent this Pokemon's ice typing, while Zapdos's grand wingspan and striking pose boldly express the danger of lightning. Unlike its counterpart, it looks menacing and wild. Its mere silhouette tells us this bird is legendary, and that's a solid indicator of this design's strength. Number 6. Nidoking He's the culmination of various other Gen 1 designs, like Rhydon and Kangaskhan. Its color scheme announces its poison typing, if the large spikes didn't already do so. No part of its body is dainty. It believably looks like a dangerous wild animal, while its colors and cute first age remind us that it can be our ally. The prospect of taming a beast like this is what makes Pokemon special. Number 5. Lapras This turtle plesiosaur is one of the first Pokemon to ever be designed. Nothing is unnecessary, even the spikes on its back that match the one on its head indicate that this Pokemon can be ridden on. Its ears give it a feminine twist. This Pokemon is motherly and will take care of you. We instantly understand that it's incredibly intelligent and calm, yet powerful. Cute but commanding, the perfect balance of a Pokemon design. Number 4. Mewtwo and Mew 
Mewtwo is clearly a man-made design with heavy sci-fi inspiration without looking grotesque or convoluted. This design tells a story and translates into many situations, a true anti-hero that is both cerebral and destructive. It perfectly contrasts with Mew's sweet and natural design, pure and underdeveloped like an embryo, ancient and primal like DNA, a perfect manifestation of the concept of a Pokemon ancestor. The length and pose of its tail dominates this Pokemon silhouette, like a helix or galaxy, making it look like the cosmic Pokemon that it is. Mewtwo's design, however, represents man playing God, a poor imitation of this actual God. Number 3. Gengar Sugimori's favorite design, a creepy, personality-driven design without any flaw, very playful, expressive, and round, while spiky, threatening, and macabre. Another great balance of cute and intimidating. It's one of the most iconic ghost designs from pop culture in general, and its possible connection to Clefable through its design is an interesting take on a doppelganger. Every design feature and proportion is perfect. Number 2. Arcanine Possibly the best example of every single criteria a Pokemon can have. It's unique, detailed but not too complicated, expressive yet believable as a living creature, adorable but imposing, a clever take on Chinese guardian lines, being colloquially known as dogs, a canine design with a feline twist. Its fire type is instantly recognizable by its colors and explosive fur. It's lively and serene. At first glance, it's the perfect Pokemon, but not number one. Before then, here are the honorable mentions. The Gen 1 starters are fantastic, but not as clever or well-rounded as some of the future starters we've gotten. They're successful, but their concepts aren't that hard to execute. Same for their evolutions. Sanshu and Sandslash were gonna make this list, but the ones in the actual top 11 are too iconic. Their type and concept is expertly conveyed. They're both cute and cool, and the idea of having these pyramid bricks as armor that extrude into spikes when they evolve is relatively inventive for a Gen 1 design. Psyduck and Golduck are iconic, but fall short from being too unique or clever. They're great for what they are and super expressive. Alakazam and Machamp were gonna be here too, but they have some flaws that can be determined. Tentacruel is very underrated, and Scyther is one of my favorite designs too, but it's not the most nuanced. And number one is... Pikachu! It's the Pokemon with the most design updates, refining it into the perfect mascot for the highest grossing franchise of all time. A design that turned into the most marketable character in the world. Everybody who sees Pikachu, even without knowing about Pokemon, falls in love with it solely based on its design. It's cute but powerful looking, unique but not complicated or abstract. The Pokemon that can believably show every emotion and be put into any kind of situation. It's THE Pokemon. I could go on, but this is a long video, so... Generation 2 A lot of these are revisited designs left over from Generation 1. These were intentionally picked now that the franchise rakes in the money. Because of this, there are way more round and softer Pokemon in this generation. A lot of them look more natural, less like RPG monsters, and more like animals that inhabit the world of Pokemon. So I'm going to pick the ones who have a nice balance of cleverness, lovability, and coolness, just like always. A friend that can fight. Number 10 Flaffy, an underrated pick. Ampharos is awesome, but its design isn't flawless. Flaffy, however, is a perfect balance of Mareep and Ampharos's strengths. It's more expressive and unique than Mareep, and fits Pokemon's aesthetic and intentions to a T, while still having that lovable wool and sheep attributes that Ampharos lacks. Its pinkness alludes to a sheared sheep, while enhancing the color scheme, exactly what you expect from a Pokemon. Number 9. Wobbuffet a bit unconventional, but clearly an interesting Pokemon to look at. It's a clever take on a punching bag, its expression is noteworthy, and its tail is very intriguing. No other Pokemon looks like it, and it makes an impression. It's a well-executed, goofy Pokemon. Number 8. Celebi It's another unique design that has no flaw, really. It's exactly what it should look like, a forest pixie. Its color scheme is very pretty, it's cute but mysterious, its head looks like a plant without being a literal plant, it just nails what it's supposed to be, and the concept just so happens to be something that would contribute to a believable Pokemon. I didn't have to explain it, honestly. Number 7. Typhlosion Frogator's my favorite and Meganium is pretty, but when I think objectively, I'm impressed by Typhlosion's concept and execution. A mountain-shaped honey badger with volcano-like fire exploding from its neck is already exciting, but the fact that honey badgers have extra padding on their necks in real life makes this interpretation sick. It's clearly a capable brawler, but very much a cuddly animal. Such a fierce design and color scheme. Number 6. Fampy and Donphan Fampy is one of the few Pokemon that give off starter vibes. That's a real compliment. It's incredibly cute and a unique take on an elephant, but then it evolves into one of the strangest yet genius designs in Pokemon. We saw a rolling tire elephant for the first time and nobody questioned it. We all thought it was a cool idea and incredibly well executed. When something this extraordinary works, you gotta give it props. Number 5. Umbreon It's the most eye-catching of the evolutions, both in literal design and the personality that the design conveys. From the golden rings to its crimson eyes, this pitch black Pokemon is fully deserving of its moon association, especially considering it's most probably a take on the moon rabbit, a common Asian motif. 
It complements Espeon very well, but comes out a bit on top with its strong features. Literally no flaw in its design in my book. Number 4. Tyranitar You'd think this Godzilla-esque monster would be too gruesome looking to be fully accepted as a Pokemon, but its proportions and color scheme are very much in line with this franchise's art style, and as the strongest dark type at the time, this aggressive looking design sends a message that only true masters can tame this beast. Also the fact that its hull looks like Tyranitar grew out of a Pupitar cocoon is very clever. Number 3. Scizor at first, I thought its lack of mouth in most of its artworks prevented it from getting a perfect score, but when its mouth is showing, it's adorable. It's undoubtedly one of the coolest looking designs in Pokemon, but the rounded shapes and lack of actual spikes makes it easier to approach and nails the whole friendly yet intimidating ratio we've been looking for. It's a simple concept, but they went above and beyond, one of the most pleasing Pokemon to look at. Number 2. The Legendary Beasts all three of them are in the same league, and are examples of legendary Pokemon that don't look like literal gods of creation, like future trios, but rather natural Pokemon that would roam the earth and master their elements. I love how they look like the literal embodiments of thunderstorms, eruptions, and north winds, the concepts that they represent. Their common attributes, like their capes, looking like a thundercloud, smoke, and aurora, to their large cat and Asian mythological creature origins, are perfectly translated into Pokemon whose appearance are legendary as well. Honorable mention time! This one's relatively short. A lot of Johto Pokemon lean into extremes. Either they're way too cute, too menacing, or too simple to comfortably emphasize their design. But Hitmontop is a great design. It's a clever manifestation of the martial art of Capoeira. Merging the fighting style with the top makes it way more nuanced than Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. It also looks like its own species, instead of a humanoid fighting type. Steelix is honestly only missing that cool ratio between intimidating and cute, because it's only scary. But I love how this design massively conveys the fact that this Pokemon digs, from its shovel-like jaw to its rotating body segments, this design tells us all we need to know about this frightening Pokemon. And number one is… Lugia. It was meticulously designed specifically for the anime, and later included into the game. Lugia is its own creature, not explicitly based on any particular animal, both friendly looking and terrifying, masculine and feminine perfect balance of many opposing yet harmonizing elements, in a very sleek and relatively minimal Pokemon design, such a stark contract from Ho-Oh's color scheme and ancient majesty. Some may say that its hand wings are kinda weird, but they're memorable and fully indicate that this Pokemon is an intelligent psychic type. Generation 3 is where a lot of modern Pokemon design attributes began. Hoenn was a region with Pokemon who matched its tropical habitat. Their colors were more saturated and vibrant, and they were heavily based on myths and natural phenomenon. Number 10 is... Jirachi. It's a very appropriate translation of its Tanabata origins. Its color scheme is soothing and regal, and it's incredibly cute. Its shape is clearly reminiscent of a shooting star, and its eyeshadow and third eye instantly give us the impression that this is an important Pokemon. Jirachi not only exquisitely describes this Pokemon's high status through its appearance, but also manages to be adorable at the same time. Number 9. The Starters This is the first generation where the three starter Pokemon you choose have clever lines that tie into cool concepts and personalities that are well balanced and realistic. You have the calm and collected Trico, a literal leaf-tailed gecko, the pure and innocent Torchic that can incubate itself, and alert Mudkip with an extremely unique design and meme potential. They felt exotic, a trio that was actually hard to pick between. Number 8. Gardevoir Its pure design indicates raw power. Its femininity is very well handled. Its hair is reminiscent of a knight helmet and its dress is ethereal, like the tail of a spirit. Its colors are distinct and heavenly, like a guardian angel. It's a design that comes close to the humanoid line without passing it. None of its proportions are exaggerated or sexualized, it's above that, while still remaining beautiful. Its red horn being a physical manifestation of its heart is a great touch. Number 7. Absol Detractors may say that this Pokemon looks like an edgy OC, as if Game Freak was supposed to predict future design trends. When looking at Absol alone, it's a treasure trove of hidden details, like the yin yang head, single horn, and third eye pattern alluding to its inspiration. But on the macro level, this Pokemon simply looks breathtaking. The black and white color scheme gives us a feel of this Pokemon's duality, and its elegant form is always astonishing to encounter in game. It looks legendary when it isn't. Number 6. Milotic. This was designed to be beautiful, and to most, it is. The entire concept of this Pokemon is that it's a fantastic design, and I'm not going to disagree just because I have the freedom to say whatever I want. I just can't lie and say that this isn't the most beautiful Pokemon to me. Number 5. Latios and Latias. I love how we technically get the same species, but separate designs that clearly express this feminine and masculine pair, and they're the legendaries closest to this golden ratio. Latios is incredibly cute, but still cool, and Latios is even cooler, but still adorable. Game Freak took the form of a machine and seamlessly combined it with an animal. There are fantastic achievements in design that are also full of personality. Number 4. Flygon 
This design was so perfect that they couldn't come up with a mega to make it look cooler. It's got the X Factor. It's a clever take on an antlion looking like dragonflies, is incredibly unique, and has this mystical personality. It looks badass and powerful, but super friendly and cuddly, on account of that killer color scheme and goggles that serve a purpose, both to guard against the sand, and also make this sleek design a bit goofy and endearing. It's very likable. Number 3. Agron. It's exactly what it looks like, a large metal dinosaur with just the right amount of detail and metal plating to make it look believable and natural, but still have the proportions and personality of a Pokemon. It doesn't look too cruel or complicated, it could fit in any franchise but still works within Pokemon. The opportunity to train a living tank kaiju is exciting. It's such a perfect combination of metal and rock while still looking like a living creature with organs and a heart. Number 2. Rayquaza. I don't know if this one's biased or not, considering it's my favorite legendary and many other people's as well, but this really is just fantastic. You can show this to anybody and they wouldn't doubt the skills of the artist who made it. I personally think it transcends the problem of looking too much like a god, considering it still looks like it has a personality. It's perpetually smiling because it will always come out on top, and its color scheme is unrivaled. Here are the honorable mentions. Grovile is one of the most successful looking middle stage starters in Pokemon. It's kind of flawless, but the nature of a middle stage makes it hard to compete. Blaziken was gonna be on the list. I love it, but a good amount of fans think that there are attributes that could be fixed. Regardless, it's a fantastic design. Breloom is such an inventive way to make a mushroom Pokemon. It looks like a regular yet unique animal in the Pokemon world. Nothing to complain about. Camerupt is one of the coolest concepts in Pokemon, but the execution wasn't flawless. If it was, it would be number one. Altaria is beautiful, magnificent to look at. It's a piece of art, but not perfect based on our criteria. Salamence is the most dragony looking dragon in Pokemon, and its design prevents it from being too creepy by giving it bright colors. It's just shy of the list. Groudon and Kyogre are perfect designs, but not perfect for the average Pokemon. Groudon is heavily detailed because it's godlike, but that alienates it from the perfectly balanced group. And Kyogre looks exactly how it should, but it's harder for a relatively normal aquatic creature to be put on the list. But Deoxys is in my opinion one of the most genius designs ever. They made a Pokemon based on literal DNA that looks menacing and cool. It's a marvel, but alienates a few fans. And number one is Metagross. It's the most successful machine-like Pokemon that can ever be designed. It has the shape of a quadrupedal spider, but is covered in this beautiful cyan armor. It's scary in concept, but admirable in execution. The X-shaped cross cuts through the design to make it look brutal, but ornate and dignified. It's intimidating, but noble. I have never found anything I dislike about this Pokemon's design. I wish I had the skill to design something this impressive. Generation 4 has a lot of high contrast designs and revisited Pokemon. Lots of blues and yellows and evolutions. This is when modern Pokemon aesthetics became solidified, especially the Sugimori artwork. Number 10 is... Gallade. While not as perfect as Gardevoir, it's a very admirable addition to the family. The fact that it feels so comfortable, like Gallade was always in the Ralts line, is a testament to how much they nailed the design. The added blue helmet and arm sword accentuate Gardevoir's existing knight origins, and his fearless expression, courageous poses, and swift movements are well established by its design. It's Gardevoir, but masculine. You can't go wrong. Number 9. Honchgrow. One of the least controversial of the evolutions released in Generation 4. No sane person believes Honchkrow is a downgrade to Murkrow in any way. It's such a natural succession and builds perfectly on the existing gangster concept. All of its mob boss attributes, like the fedora and ascot, are seamlessly integrated into its body. Everything about it looks correct, and its design screams swagger, character, and personality. Such a lovely color scheme too. Number 8. Mamoswine. Another added evolution to a previous Pokemon that you can't help but see as a total upgrade. It's exactly what it's supposed to look like. A mammoth swine. It's got such strong features. It's giant and intimidating, but soft and begging to be pet. It could be your gentle giant or dominating monster. The hint of blue on its face is magnificent, so delicious, and unlike Piloswine, there's nothing left to be desired. A solid concept with a solid execution. Number 7. Rotom. Such a versatile Pokemon. Its base form is minimal, but still its best. It looks like a mischievous friend. A ball of lightning is so appealing. It could be a mascot on its own, and I guess its prominence in the last few generations is an indication of how Game Freak knows the potential of this design. Number 6. Rose Raid. Another beautiful Pokemon without any exaggerated proportions. Its white rose hair signifies this femme fatale's experience. You can tell by this expression that Rose Raid is a poison type. The masquerade elements and cape are so naturally incorporated into the leaf aesthetic, and there are so many elements, but they flow together. It's a very elegant and stylish design, like its own character. Number 5. Combi. I think this is one of the most underrated designs in Pokemon. It's genius and so well executed. 
You'd think that three bees stuck together would be a nightmare, but the honeycomb that binds them, shared antenna, abdomen, and wings all combine with the individual baby faces to make a bundle of joy that is Combi. It's clearly cute, and thanks to its bee-ness, it has the danger factor to balance it out. Such a fantastic fictional creature in general. Number 4. Darkrai Managing to create the physical manifestation of nightmares and having it look creepy and spectral while still being appealing and cool to stay within this franchise's marketability goal is an astounding achievement. You can totally understand that this thing is the nightmare Pokemon, but it's not nightmare inducing. It looks like a friendly sleep paralysis demon. That's like the most successful you can get with such a concept. The mouth-like collar and flowy white hair really make this design feel like it's uh, straight out of a surreal painting. Number 3. Lucario and Riolu. These two look like the protagonists of Pokemon. If there was a Pokemon other than Pikachu to base an entire series on, it would be a Riolu who evolves into a Lucario. They're just the perfect combination of cool and adorable, with an appealing color scheme, clever take on Anubis, and unique shapes that make them recognizable. Exactly what makes a great Pokemon design. Number 2 are the starters and their evolutions. The starters themselves are great, one of the most solid trios, but nothing rare within Pokemon since starters are usually great. But they're final evolutions, bro. This is undoubtedly the strongest trio of final starter evolutions. None of them clearly overshadows the other, like in the other gens. All three are based on divine legends from around the world. They look like nature gods, and there are so many elements that hit. The biome on Torterra's shell, his color scheme and gentle giant nature, Infernape's flame head, white fur and golden armor, and Empoleon's blade flippers, regal attire and trident beak. From the concept to the final evolution's execution, they did not miss. Honorable mentions go to Drifloon, a cute object mon with clever string arms and a bit of personality. Baneri, ears that can coil and retract to attack, an incredibly cute design with function, could have been a mascot if it was less plain. Miss Magius is creepy and pretty, such a mesmerizing design. Carchomp could have been here guys, we all know it. It's a fantastic design, but it's not something every Pokemon fan wants from a Pokemon design. Krogonk almost made it, a very unique take on a poison dart frog with lots of personality, no actual flaws really. Leafeon is beautiful, but it's not what everyone wants from a grass-type evolution, and it probably ranks on the bottom half of this family, despite its natural design. Dust Noir has such a brilliant look, and it's totally accepted as the Pokemon Grim Reaper, but again, it doesn't have a perfect balance of cool and adorable. Not the most friendly looking. And finally, Giratina. It's hard to put these godlike legendaries on a list, because while they're masterfully designed, their many abstract details and complicated builds make them too intricate for an average Pokemon fan's liking. But Kiratina is fairly straightforward, and all its details only enhance its design. Nothing is out of place. It's successful at not being too scary. But number one is... Luxray. The concept of an X-Ray Lynx is already genius, but the execution is breathtaking. The contrast of dark fur with bright electric colors and yellow lines shows how this predator blurs the lines between friend or foe. It's a handsome devil. So intimidating, but as adorable as any cat. While other Pokemon manage to be a healthy mix of both cute and cool, this Pokemon has both to the extreme. Making us desire to befriend a dangerous looking creature is the X factor that perfect Pokemon designs have, and that's Luxray's biggest strength. But that's it for this video. Please let me know which Pokemon you want to see in part 2, which will feature the next 4 generations. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe to know when part 2 comes out. Consider becoming a patron or click the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram where I post full art of the Pokemon I make on this channel. Bye!